You felt the pain at the pump. They go up and down, fluctuate, you know, and you don't really have a choice. You know, the American people are, are tired of high gas prices. What are we supposed to do? I got to work so hard just to just to get to work. When you're a handyman and you're not uh, and you're using your own truck, your own gas, it, it hurts. The unpredictable cost of gasoline is only one consequence of high oil prices. Trucks, buses, trains, airplanes, almost all operate on petroleum. They use it not only to transport us, but also the goods upon which we depend. So a higher price for oil means higher prices for just about everything else. Rising gas prices translate well beyond the pump. You'll pay more for food because of shipping costs and even an airline ticket. Rising energy prices also increase the cost of doing business for job creators and taking away dollars that otherwise could go to hiring workers. The solution, some believe, is simple. Exploit America's large oil reserves, domestic and offshore, by drilling more. We found out why this simple solution is wrong, dangerously wrong for America. It seems obvious that expanded domestic oil production would lead to greater energy independence and bring fuel prices down. Drill more, say proponents, and we will have all the oil we need. Fuel will cost less, and it will no longer be necessary to develop alternative or renewable sources. There are 800 billion barrels of oil that we are not using, barrels of our oil that we are not using. If America is truly going to be independent this Independence Day, we have to stop this dependence on foreign oil. So do you think if we drilled now, the price would come down significantly just because we say we're going to drill? Absolutely. Reality paints a far different picture. America's oil reserves, although substantial, exist primarily in the form of oil sands and shale oil. Recovering this oil requires strip or open pit mining in the case of oil sands, or hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling in the case of shale oil. These technologies, along with offshore drilling, have ecological consequences. More, they are expensive. Should fuel prices come down, much of America's oil would once again be economically off-limits. Our dependence on foreign oil, pumped with cheaper, traditional methods, would increase. But if somehow we could drill enough to achieve energy independence, wouldn't prices come down? The evidence says otherwise. Even with U.S. production strongly increasing, oil prices have also been increasing. While domestic oil production plays an important role in ensuring the energy security of the country, its contribution to the world oil balance is just not sufficient to bring global oil prices down. The price of oil is set globally, not regionally. It is a world commodity, with prices set by a world market that is far from free. Of course you're going to see this happening all over the Arab countries. The cartel known as the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, exists specifically to manipulate the supplies and price of oil. One of the most serious long-term challenges facing our country is dependence on oil, especially oil from foreign lands. Its members, authoritarian regimes controlling nationalized oil companies, succeeded in driving the average price of a barrel of oil to $111.50 in 2012 despite rising U.S. production and continuing weakness in the world economy. Last year we achieved uh, the highest income, and this year I think will be the highest income ever for the OPEC. You know, as a former counterterrorism prosecutor, it disturbs me that we export $700 billion from this country to countries overseas that don't have our best interest at heart. Horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing technologies opened up access to new sources of domestic petroleum. Now this is a good thing for jobs, the trade balance, and the economy in the near term. Producing more domestic oil is better than funding countries known for sponsoring terrorism and oppressing their own people, but it will not bring prices down. Are you becoming energy independent by drilling for oil at tens of dollars a barrel cost in the United States when the Saudis and the Iranians can adjust the price as they see fit? No. It's a fantasy. We import about 45% of our oil. 
And it doesn't matter how much we produce in this country, the price of oil is an international price. Last year, the American people, it was announced on the news last night, paid more for gasoline than they have ever paid before. Why is that happening at a time when we are producing more and there's less demand? History makes things even more clear. When domestic oil production declined in the 1980s, gas prices were low. Today, despite a U.S. oil boom resulting from new discoveries and technologies, fuel prices remain high. This has been one of the primary restraints to economic recovery from the Great Recession. Oil production in America is at an eight-year high. We've quadrupled the number of operating oil rigs and opened up millions of acres for drilling. But you and I both know that with only 2% of the world's oil reserves, we can't just drill our way to lower gas prices. Despite the simplistic beliefs of some and the advocacy of large oil companies looking to maintain their dominance on the transportation fuel supply, drilling more will not lower fuel prices. We are actually seeing reduced demand at the same time that we have higher production. So why then, when you drive up to a gas pump, are we asked to pay more? Because it's an international price. The solution may be as close as the nearest light switch. Because no single source dominates, the cost of America's electricity is stable and affordable. In comparison to the spikes and long-term increases in the price at the pump, the price of electricity, made from diverse, regionally priced and regionally abundant sources, has added stability and prosperity to the U.S. economy. Our electricity prices and our uh, energy independence uh, looks very positive. The generation of electric power from coal, natural gas, nuclear, hydro, geothermal, wind, solar, and biomass is diverse and domestic. America doesn't need just one choice on energy. We need access to all the domestic energy resources we can develop. Renewable and diverse sources for transportation fuel already exist. Biodiesel, for one, is domestically produced and environmentally friendly. Made from a variety of feedstocks and already displacing more than a billion gallons of fossil fuel annually, biodiesel is here now. So that is our role as an industry, to make the transportation fuel supply look more like the power generation supply. By itself, drilling more oil cannot secure our energy independence and bring stability to America's transportation fuel needs. Diversifying the nation's transportation fuel portfolio with a broader range of fuels, including clean, domestic, advanced biofuels like biodiesel, will. The bill I signed today takes a significant step because it will require fuel producers to use at least 36 billion gallons of biofuel in 2022. This is nearly a five-fold increase over current levels. It will help us diversify our energy supplies and reduce our dependence on oil. It's an important part of this legislation, and I thank the members of Congress for your wisdom. America's transportation journey will, for the foreseeable future, include petroleum. But we also need, as part of the mix and part of energy security, which equals national security, to support and to produce new technologies and new industries and to support biofuels and renewable fuels. The true solution lies in the diversification of America's transportation fuels. And a key part is biodiesel.